All right, so today's presentation, our training is on exit code training. Oh, yes. So for a little bit of housekeeping, if you need to ask a question, you can either unmute yourself. If you have a question, you can type it in the chat box or uh, unmute yourself and ask your question or put it in the chat box. There you go. Um, there are two documents. There's a crosswalk document and a PDF of the PowerPoint. Those are put in the chat box. So you can download those um, for your convenience. And I'm going to apologize a little bit in advance because it, there are maybe portions of this training that might seem a little bit basic um, as we go into looking at the data and how to sort and stuff. So, so the purpose of our training today is, is because of that exit code data and looking at it. Then we're gonna do just a little bit about the graduation requirements. We're gonna talk about the exit codes and the documents available. We're gonna talk about marking them in campus. And then we're gonna look at SD stars and look at that data check. So the purpose of our training is um, that quick overview of graduation requirements. We're not gonna spend any time on it, just a couple of slides to just remind you what those are. The main reason we're doing this training is to help districts ensure that the information in Infinite Campus, the student management system is correct. And if you find some errors within the data, how to go in and make those changes. Um, it's also to begin that technical assistance on how to fix those er er uh, errors. So good data is needed for the APR, which is the annual performance report that the special ed office provides districts. Uh, for that graduation and dropout rate. Data is also used for the RDA process, accountability process, and for school and district report cards. Uh, Melissa, do you have your phone or your mute mic muted? All right. So the graduation requirements. So this is the page where you would find those high school graduation requirements. If you go under the students with special needs, there are some documents that will help guide you through some of the information that we have provided. The South Dakota, the next um, picture or graphic is that infographic of what those requirements look like. So here we go. Okay, so the language arts, the LA and language arts, the students need one unit of writing and we talk about units as being those credits. They need a half a unit of speech or debate, another unit of literature, and a half of that must be American literature. And then they need a unit and a half of language arts electives. For math, they just need that algebra one unit and then two other math electives. By, for science, it's that biology and then do two science electives. For social studies, one US history, a half of US government, and one and a half of other social studies electives. Then you need, they need one unit, and it can be a combo of any of these, approved CTE, a capstone experience, or a world language. And those world languages are like your Spanish, your French, things like that. Then they also need a half of the credit for the personal finance or economics, a half of a unit or a half of a credit for physical education, one for fine arts, a half a credit for health or health integration. And then they have five and a half other units of electives that they can take for a total of 22 units. And that's all that I have. And that's those basic diploma requirements that is required for all students basic diploma requirements for all students. Now we're gonna go into exit codes for special education. Beth? Yep. I apologize, I don't have the exit crosswalk you used. Okay. You don't have the exit crosswalk document, is that what it is? Yes. Okay. Um, I will put that up at the end of the presentation for those of you that want it. I'm, because I'm scared sharing my screen, I'm not as comfortable doing things like that, but I will put that up at the end. 
Okay, so for the 1920-2020 graduation data reported to US Ed, this is what we found. If we looked at the general enrollment exit codes, we had 610 students or graduates that were on an IEP. According to the exit, the special ed exit codes, only nine, 495 were reported. That's a difference of 115 students, 23% difference. So that's the purpose for this training as well, is to make sure that we are looking at both of those exit codes and making sure that they match. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the IEP program exit codes. So when you look at those special ed field codes, one is for those students not receiving SE or special ed services. So you've had an IEP team meeting and the student no longer, or you've reevaluated a student and those, that student no longer qualifies for special education. You would use this code, the one code. Two is that graduated with a regular high school diploma. They've met all the same requirements as their non-disabled peers. Three, continuous completed IEP team pot modified coursework. That's for those students that have had that modified course requirements or the coursework was modified, okay? But they've completed that, but they're still coming back because there's still some requirements that they still need to complete. Four is reach that maximum age, and you would use this code if they have not completed the IEP team modified course requirements. The only thing that they've done is they've aged out. They've reached that maximum age of 21. And five is self-explanatory. Six, move known to be continuing. That's where the student has moved. You've got received a records transfer request. And so you know they're enrolled in another school. Seven, you know the student has moved out of your district, but you're not sure where they went. So you know they've moved, but not known if they're continuing or not. Eight is that dropout. These could be dropouts, runaways, GED recipients. Remember, if the student is getting his GED, they do have to um, unenroll from school to take that GED test. Once they've taken that GED, they could actually re-enroll in school and then go on and get their high school diploma if that's what they choose to do. Nine, refuse services. So again, this is, could be those who are homeschooled or it could be for those colony students that have completed grade eight for a religious exemption. 10 is completed the IFSP prior to reaching maximum age of three for that part C. 11, change in an IEP. So this you've had an IEP meeting and there's been a change in either the disability category or maybe the LRE, least restrictive environment. And so you're gonna change the fields in the IEP. So the ending code is going to be 11 and then you're gonna create a new special ed um, record for that student. So that's when you would use that change in IEP. 12, the student continues. Here it says, do not use this code on records at the end of the year. The special ed rollover wizard will only roll forward records that do not use an end date and exit reason. So if the student is coming back the next year, then you do not want to use this code because you want that special ed wizard to roll them over. 13 is discontinued education. So they've completed the IEP team modified course requirements, but they've decided not to come back to school. So you use 13. 14 is aged out, but they've completed the IEP team modified course requirements. This is different than that 04 one where they've um, aged out. This is where they've actually completed the IEP team and then they've aged out. Five is a revocation of consent. So the parents say, or the student, if they're of age, have said, I no longer want to receive services. And you've had them sign that revocation of services. Okay, so you're gonna use the 15 code for those kids. Remember, these are just the IEP team program exit codes, those special ed field exit codes. You can find these codes in the student data collection desk guide. Uh, this is put out by the Office of Data Management every fall. It's updated every fall. You can find it on the link that I have provi provided. And 
on our website, a lot of times we have sections on each of these websites with a plus in front of those sections. So you're gonna to go to the documents, click on the plus sign, and you're gonna find it in there. I found that it's usually like the last document in that section. If you're looking for the special ed information, it starts on page 92 of the August 2020 desk guide. And these exit codes are found on page 101. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the crosswalk document. This is also found in that desk guide that's put out by data management. And it shows you the general enrollment field and the special ed field. The numbers aren't always the same, but it shows how they actually work together. So 01 is when a district expels someone, the district is still obligated to provide FAPE for the student with disabilities. The student may not have an end date in their regular or may have an end date in the regular school calendar, but then should be entered into school nine, um, number 97, okay? And I think it explains more about that in the desk guide. So in your special ed field, you're not gonna put anything because again, the district is still required to um, provide FAPE for that student. O2, discontinued education or dropped out for special ed. We have the, o, the eight dropout code, or it could be that seven moved, not known to continue. So you know the student has moved out of your district, but you're not sure where, and you've not received any of those uh, requests for record transfers. Three is that in-school transfer would be the same as six for special ed, move known to continue. Four student graduated is the same as our two student graduated, and those are those that get that regular high school diploma. This is not the GED, this is not a certificate of completion, this is the regular high school diploma. They've met all the same requirements as their non-disabled peers. And five again is those student, the student has died, and those are the same record or same number. Six, committed to an institution, that would be six in special ed code, move known to continue. Seven, that reached maximum age for special ed. It, in special ed code, it's reached maximum age. Eight is out of state school transfer. For six is move known to be continued because you've gotten that record request. So you know that they are continuing in another district. In the regular ed field, it's a colony student grade eight for religious exemptions. It's gonna be nine in special ed world, refuse services. So number 10 is the student is retained. They're gonna repeat a grade. There's nothing in the special ed record that you need to put if you, because you want that record to roll forward. So you're not gonna put an end date for that student. 11 student continues. So you could use 12, but again, remember, if you put 12 student continues in the special ed field, that special ed rollover wizard will not roll that record forward. So you need to leave that blank. 12 in the general ed enrollment field, um, persistently dangerous or transfer could either be the six known to continue or 11 change in IEP. That's if the transfer was due to an IEP team decision. So the LRE has either changed or maybe the um, disability code maybe had changed or something. So you could use the 11 change in IEP. 13, school tr improvement transfer. Again, six known to continue. 14, homeschool transfer. This could be a nine refuse services because remember if they're doing homeschool, the public district does not have to provide special ed services to that student. They could if they would like to, and then you could put this 12 code student continues, but you're only gonna do that if they are providing special ed services. Many districts do not provide services to the homeschool student. 15 suspended, this is the district, um, is still obligated to provide FAPE. So the special ed record would not have an exit code. And, and again, read in here, because you're gonna enter that student as a number 97. And I'm not exactly sure what that number 97 is. Um, I should have checked on that. 16 is the whole homeschool completer, different than the homeschool transfer in 14. This is a homeschooler that has actually completed their education. 
You're gonna use again that nine refused services, or you could be using the 12 student continues if the district is providing services to that student. 17, discontinued education completed the GED. Again, refused services code. 18, discontinued exceeded compulsory age. Remember that compulsory age is age of 18. Nine is going to be, you're going to use the nine code in special ed for refused services. And when you use this code, it just is letting us know that if the student wants to come back to school and enrolls again, then they're still eligible for services. Number 19 continues completed IEP team modified course requirement says the exact same thing as the 03 code in special ed in the special ed fields. Continues completed IEP team modified course requirements. 20 is that discontinued education, even though they've completed the IEP team modified coursework, the same as the 13 code. 21 aged out, this is where they've completed the IEP team modified course requirement. It's the same as the special ed code of 14, completed IEP team modified course requirements. There are a couple of special ed codes that don't have any general enrollment codes, and that would be the number one where they're not receiving special ed services. That's because the student is still in school, they're still receiving their general education, but they're just not receiving special ed services. Change in an IEP, they're still enrolled in school, there was just a change in their IEP, such as a new, um, maybe a change in placement or a change in disability category. So you're gonna do a new record, in the special ed field section. And we will see that here in a couple more minutes. The other one is the revocation of consent. Again, the student is still in school, so you would not have, have an end code for the general enrollment field. Any quick questions? All right, then I'm gonna continue. Now we're gonna take a look at Infinite Campus and see where we're going to, um, what we need to do. So who checks the exit codes in Infinite Campus in your district? This again is a district decision. It's not something we tell the districts who needs to be entering this information or who needs to be checking this information. It may be the special ed director, um, that checks to see if they're aligned. The special ed administrative assistant might be the one that is putting these in, this information in campus, or it just might be an administrative assistant that's entering the general enrollment information as well as the special ed information. Again, those are the district decisions, okay? So where in campus are these exit codes? So you would go to the enrollment tab, and I'm not certain if you're, Screens look exactly like mine because I do have that state edition, but I'm hoping that they're very similar. So if you go to the enrollment tab, the top part of that enrollment tab says general enrollment information. And you can see on this one that the state and status says student graduated. Then if you scroll down the page towards the bottom, you will find the special ed fields. And in the special ed fields, you see the special ed programs, the special ed categories and the primary disability. And also at the very bottom of this record or this one single record, you will see that it has the end date or and the exit code. And on this one, the exit code says to graduated high school diploma. So you can see these two codes do match. So let's take a look at another one. Here we have the general enrollment information. Um, the general enrollment, the student's a first grader, and it says the student continues. But down in the bottom in the special ed fields, it says 13 discontinued completed IEP team modified course requirements. That 13 exit code should be for high school students because we're talking about those students that have completed their coursework in high school. So this doesn't really make sense when it's a first grader and they've completed their IEP team modified goals. If this student has completed their, their, their special ed program, if the student was maybe a, oh, here it says they're a specific learning disability, then you would use that code of one. Um, 
not receiving SE services, okay? And that's not receiving special ed services. Another um, example would be here, the student um, has a discontinued education dropped out. But if you look at the special ed fields, it shows us that the student actually is graduated. So this doesn't make sense. So how can a student who's dropped out ha have graduated from high school? So a mismatch of information. So in the special ed program records, sometimes there are two special ed program records in one enrollment. So if you go to the general enrollment and then you scroll down and on this one, you can see there are two special ed fields records. The first one started in um, September of 2020. They have an end date of 11-12-2020 and they started the next record on 11-13-2020. You cannot end a record on the same date as you start a new record. You have to have two ending dates or two dates, and they can be one date and then the next day. And then notice there is a second end date of 2-12-2021. So in this one, if we look at our special ed program field, it started out as mild to moderate disability. And if you look in the second record, they changed it to a severe disability. So that's why they entered a new record, a new special ed record is because they changed the special ed program section, okay? The other place where they might have changed would have been the special ed category because they could have changed the LRE from a general class with um, modifications 80 to 100%. So they could have went to a, a 110 or um, a 120, which are codes in special ed, or they could have changed the primary disability. And here it looks like it's a 505 student. Maybe they had an IEP meeting and the category changed and now the student's a 525. And that would be a reason why you would change and put in a new special ed field record. Here's another one. We want to make sure that you do not leave the end dates open. We want to make sure that there is only one open end date or exit field. So in this one, we can see that on 126-2021, there was a special ed record that was developed and it ended on 422, 2021 because it was a change in IEP. We can see on 423, there was an, another special ed record started and we have an, no end date because that student is still receiving services. So I guess the reason for this slide is because you cannot have two special ed records that are both open. One of them would have to have an end date and an exit code. So how do I know which students have codes that don't match? You don't want to go in and look at every single student in Infinite Campus to see if their codes match or not. So that's where we go to SD stars. Okay. When I go into X, SD stars, there is a document in there called the SD stars data dig that will help you look for those special ed exit codes and it does a nice walkthrough of what to look for. SD Stars also has an exit code report that you can download into an Excel spreadsheet. And once you've done this, you can then check that information against information in Infinite Campus. So hopefully you won't see too many error messages or errors that you would find. So this is the link to get to that longitudinal data system website or in our language, SD stars. There are a couple of links on the front page of that, but what you wanna do is click on the graphic. By clicking on the graphic, it does take you to the login page. So your login is usually your email, at least my login is my email. If you're a first time at logging in, there is a click uh, uh, link that you click on for first time users. If you've used that and still can't get in, it's because maybe you haven't been entered into the system yet and you need to find the person in your district who is your SD Stars accounts manager. And they can put you in the system and get you permissions to the sections that you need permission for. Okay. And it would be that special ed information. Every district does have an SD Stars account manager. 
So when you get log into SD Stars, what you're going to do is you're going to go to that red ribbon and you're going to go to the training center. And in the training center, you're going to scroll down and you're going to find what's called the Special Education Data Interpretation Guides, or they call them DIGS, SD or um, Data DIGS. And the very first one there is the Special Education Exeter Report DIG. And if you look on the right hand side, it shows you an example of what that DIG really kind of looks like. It starts out and explains the quick references, the questions report will help answer. Um, it talks about the intended audience. This guide for the Special Ed Exeters is a nine page um, document. You wouldn't have to use all of it, but it does help walk you through the information. So to get to our SD Stars report, you're gonna go back to that red ribbon. You're gonna to go to report. And on mine, it says state reports. I would think if you're logged in as a district, yours is gonna have district or school reports. You're gonna again, scroll down until you get to the special education reports and you should have a special education Exeter report. If you don't have the special ed Exeter report, then you may have to get a hold of your district's SD Stars manager and they would have to give you permission to that report. Once you get to that report or click on that report, it's going to come up with a filter. So in the filter for training purposes, I use the 2019-2020 school year because if I use the 2020-2021 school year, schools have not yet done any exiting and I, there wouldn't have been any information in it for me to look at yet. For me, I had to choose a district or I could have chosen all districts. For you, your district name should show up in there. For number three then is the schools. So you can select all schools from the list. You just mark the all schools. If you notice the important graphic there, it says when using the all districts, all schools or all grades option, make sure no other options are selected. If you select all schools and a specific school, the report will only display, uh oh, <laughs> lights went out the specific school selected. And the same is true for districts and grades. And believe me, that's exactly how it works because I made the mistake of selecting one school. And when I didn't get very much data, I couldn't figure out what I had done wrong. And it was because I had selected all schools and then one school and it just gave me that one school data. So, so it does work like it's supposed to work. Uh, number four then is you need to select the special ed reasons. I always select all reasons in the box because I wanna ensure that all the data, it looks good, not just the high school exit data, but all the data. Five is the enrollment exit reasons. And again, I select all. Another thing that once I forgot to do was to hit the view reports. And I sat there and sat there and wondered why isn't it showing me the data? It's because I forgot to hit on the right hand side that view report. When you do hit that button, you may need to be patient for a little bit because depending on the amount of data that it has to search and look for, it might take a minute or so. Once it has the data has loaded, you're going to get a ribbon that has some reporting information on it. The first page, the previous page, the current page, the next page, last page, and so on. The one that I use on here and go to almost always is the export report link, okay? Sometimes I use the next page, but not very often. As you can see on this one, there's one page of one, so there might not have been very many students. And in this case, I might not have exported the data, but by exporting it into an Excel spreadsheet, you can actually manipulate your data or filter your data to look at it. Okay. So this report also looks at special ed students who are currently or were in special ed at the school or district at any time during the school year. Exiting the report. So in order to exit the report, you need to 
click on the little disk and it will show you your options options for how you want to exit your information. Again, I always use Excel. I'm an Excel user, and that's um, what I'm going to be talking to you about in this training. If you use any of the others, feel free to use them. I'm not sure how much guidance I would be able to give you because, again, I am an Excel user. Now, once I have downloaded the Excel, you need to make sure you know where that Excel has downloaded to, because when I download it, it always goes down into the left-hand corner, and then I have to click on that link, and it brings up the Excel spreadsheet. Once I open that spreadsheet, the first thing I do is I usually make a copy of the worksheet that's in, or the workbook that's in that worksheet, because I want to be able to look at the data and manipulate the data. And if I delete or add or remove some information, I want to be able to have a master list. So I right click on the worksheet at the bottom, um, slide up to where it says move or copy. Then what you have to do is you have to make sure you click on the create a copy. Um, and then hit OK, and I then I also do a rename, and by renaming it, again, you click on that worksheet, go up to where it says rename, and I always rename one of them master. Then I do not use the master worksheet when I'm manipulating my data, but I use the other one. That way I always have that data in its pure form when I've downloaded it. So now we have our Excel document. And so what I want to do is I want to go to line five. And in line five, I want to highlight all of line five. Then I want to go up into my ribbon at the top and look for where it says sort and filter. And I want to click on filter because what it does is it gives you those arrows in each of the columns to be able to filter. If you can't find that in your home, ribbon, you might have to go to your data ribbon at the top, okay? So once you um, have enabled filtering on that line five, you can start filtering. And in order to filter, you can filter by grade, by special ed exit code, or by general ed exit code. And I have shown you examples of what those filters have looked like and what are available in the spreadsheet that I had downloaded. When you are filtering, always remember to click the OK button because if you do not click the OK button, it won't filter like what you're thinking. So if you don't want all of them filtered, then click on the check mark for the select all and then you can uncheck any that you don't want it to filter for. So that's how you filter for these different sections. So I did a data check and what I did is I unchecked the all and I checked grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. After I hit OK, then I went over to the exit enrollment from enrollment, so the general enrollment. And I clicked for student, or I unchecked select all, and I checked just for student graduated, clicked OK. Then I went to exit code from special ed, and it had two options. And the two options there said not receiving SE services and graduated from high school. So if a student graduated, these two codes make sense because a student who graduated may not be receiving special ed services anymore, or they could have graduated. So when I did the check on the gra student graduated, it looks like the check was a good check for that filter. So in order to reset the filters, you have to go back and either click the clear filter from grade level and then hit the select all or clear filter from whichever of those that you had filters set for. If you don't clear the filter, then you're not going to be able to select for the next filter. Now we're gonna do another filter. And this time the first filter I did was from exit code from enrollment. And I selected um, 
discontinued or completed IEPT modified course requirements. And I selected the special ed exit and it shows that it just has the, the blanks dot, dot, dot. That just means that it has an open record that yes, it has a special ed record, but there's no end code. So the thing that looks a little strange for me in this one is with the 20 discontinued completed IEP team modified course requirements, the grade level in this says um, early childhood age five. So the discontinued completed IEP team modified course requirements is for those students that are in high school. And so the early childhood and the age five does not make sense. So what would you do next? You would have to look at the student's SSID number and go in and see what code would be appropriate for the student in campus and then change it in campus. Let's try one more. This time I filtered exit code from enrollment column and I did the in-state school transfer. When I went to the special ed exit codes, I see the blank, 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 which means the student is still, or dash, 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 which means the student's still receiving services. And I also see not receiving SE services, move known to continue, move not known to continue, or refuse services. Do these all seem reasonable? To me, it seems like there's one there that if it's an in-school transfer, one of those doesn't see appropriate. And that would be the moved known, not known to continue, that seven code. So if it's an in-school transfer, wouldn't you know where the student has gone? And so with that one, again, you would look for the student's SSID number in your spreadsheet, and then you would go to campus and see what needs to be changed. Did the student actually move to somewhere within the school or within the state or not? So what are your next steps? Your next steps then are to work with your district staff to check those exit codes. You can run the report in SD stars, you can filter to find some er the errors or maybe there are no errors, which would be wonderful. You can change the codes that are incorrect and that would be changing them in SD stars. Don't change them in the spreadsheet because that's not gonna help you. Then you're gonna have to wait until at least the next day to run another report because SD stars does um, upload overnight, make those changes overnight. It pulls the information from campus every night, every evening. Starting at the end of May, special ed programs, my office will be also checking the data. And so we may be contacting you if we find some errors, but it would be great if you would not wait for us to contact you, if you would start making those changes now or as soon as school is out. So next, are there any burning questions? You can unmute yourself or you can chat in, you can type it in the chat box. 